Hey, what is going on everybody? It's nothing but skills and in today's video we are going to be showing you guys my best settings. Now a lot of you guys have been asking for this video and I felt that there were a couple videos out there but I figured, you know what, there isn't my settings, what I prefer to run with and I feel like this gives you the advantage. Um, your settings will always help you improve as a player. Like say if you're a good player, you're just going to get become a better player. Now say if you're a horrible player, you might actually stay a horrible player but you know what, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the settings. So all you have to do to mess with your settings is hit the option tab or the option button um, on your controller and that's going to bring you to the control settings. So now these, most of these settings can be used for controller and for PC a little bit but mainly we're looking for, this is console controllers that you guys would be um, messing with here. So if you're using a controller, these are my current settings. Now for the button layout, I always like going with tactical over the default and the only difference here is the R3 button. Yes, the R3 button is going to be crouch prone slide versus the circle, well the circle is going to be um, melee but if you go default then you have crouch prone slide on the circle and then melee on R3. I personally like the tactical setup, some people like the default setup and then if they're running some type of scuff, scuff controller, they just run the paddles, right? So tactical is definitely where I like to be with my setup here. Now for the stick layout, I go with the default stick layout, vertical look, I leave it disabled, dead zone, I personally like .05, this is something that you always have to play with. Um, you need to play with your dead zone depending on your controller so definitely play with this a little bit I think 0.05 is the default that's what I usually go with now for battle royales games I always find that having some stick sensitivity down less than what you usually have it at always works better because a lot of your fights honestly are mid to long range and then sometimes you have those close range battles but it's not too many that you have to spin around and shoot multiple people like you do in the multiplayer right so my stick sensitivity is 6-6 six, six. I've heard people going low as 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6 is what I like. Now, if you guys like fast sensitivity, well, that is up to you. You can crank this all the way up, but I personally 100% like 6, 6, and this is what I've been running with. For my ADS sensitivity multiplier, I've been running with 1 on the low zoom and then on the high zoom, 1.25. Now, this is definitely something that you guys need to play with. Just like the stick sensitivity, you need to adjust these two your ability so this is what I currently run with right now for my aim response curve type I go with the standard um, some people like the linear dynamic that is another thing that you guys need to check out but I personally like the standard and then for controller vibration like I always like having mine disabled but if you like the rumble in your sticks well you might want to go enable but yeah disable for aim assist I go with the standard this is a traditional aim slow down near target I find this one be, to be the best out of all the settings in the game. For the weapon mount, I like to use double tap ADS. Some people use um, just ADS, some people use ADS plus melee. Double tap ADS seems to be what I run with. Now the weapon mount um, movement exit, I have that enabled so if I am mounted and I hit my joystick I will just pop right off. Right. Aim down sight behavior, I like to have it hold. Toggle just seems like a pain, so I always go with hold. You see how it switches that, so we want to keep that right there. But yeah, aim down sight, you want hold. Equipment behavior, this is something that I recommend you guys playing with and figuring out what you like. So hold, press and hold to ready to cook lethal and tactical equipment. So anytime you're using your um, lethal, like so your grenades, you hold. Or you could toggle, press ready lethal and then press again to aim down sights to throw and deploy. I personally like hold on this one. Now for the use and reload behavior, this is where I use a contextual tap. You can also use tap to use, this is really up to you. Tap to reload or tap to use. I really like this 100% and if you are holding the button, it always reloads. So you can pick between tap to use, contextual tap. I'm gonna let you guys decide there. Now. The, um, depleted ammo weapon switch I have this on enabled weapon automatically switches when you are trying to fire while ammo is depleted some people like the disabled I like to put enabled for the slide behavior I went from hold to tap 
I definitely like the tap. All you have to do is tap the button and you automatically um, slide while you are sprinting. Now the auto move forward, I disabled this one. Um, some of you guys might the, like the enabled. We go to automatic sprint. I like the automatic tactical sprint. Now move forward while sliding to make your character automatically activate tactical sprint. We head down to vehicle camera recenter. I have this enabled. The parachute auto deploy, I have this enabled. If you feel like it deploys when it shouldn't, well then you can disable it. Um, this is really up to you, right? But it says this option is only available in multiplayer ground war, co-op, and war zone modes. Of course, the ones that you are disabled. But that is my, my setup for my controller. There are a couple more settings that I do with general and we'll do the audio settings real quick too. So something I recommend for, if you guys are having trouble seeing, Making your brightness on your game could make a night and day difference. I use monitors, so 52 t seems to work with me. But if you are having trouble seeing enemies, blast that bad boy up. Now for film grain, I have 0.25. And then where I do like to change it is the colorblind settings. I definitely like this setting right here. If you look, um, this is what you typically have. It's a darker gray. If you head a little bit closer, you see how the colors get more bright. This is what I like. I feel like this one's too blue, but this one right here is perfectly fine. Um, colorblind target interface. Um, so for world motion blur, this is where you guys wanna disable this. So look, disable removes the blurring of the objects. And what that dude is, it, it's a little trick. It allows you to see the target without blurring. You see right here, if you look to the right, it's kind of, it's blurry, right? Well, if you disable it, you never have to really worry about not being able to see the object. And the same thing with weapon motion blur, that I would disable too. So these two, I would 100% disable. It's really up to you, but I feel that this gives you a little bit of an advantage. So I really recommend you guys changing these two settings. Um, what I really do like, what a lot of people don't do is this mini map shape. I use square, so you see we have the round, but if you look at the square, you have more area on your little mini map and I feel that's always better to have your mini map so like if gunfire is at the top right you still would be able to get that on the square versus the round um, mini map rotation I have enabled but if you're with the solid squad you can almost disable this and then if you say he's north everybody looks on their mini map and they know exactly what you're talking about if you say west they'll look on their mini map but that everybody would have to disable this I personally have my enabled because everybody has theirs enabled. But if I'm running with a squad that wants to switch this, or you're running with a squad, you might want to change that right there. Um, and you have the letters, or you can do the numbers. So if you want to have where you hit northwest, west, you can do that, or you can just have it where it always shows all the numbers. That's up to you. And then for text chat, I always disable mine um, just because it gets kind of crazy sometimes. It gets in the way. I feel like no need to have it on there. And then the last but not least is the audio settings. I, for my audio mix, I run boost high and I feel like I, that has been the best, that has been actually the best for um, listening to sound. And then for the master volume, these are just some settings you wanna change. A lot of my friends have been dropping their effects, their dialogue vo volume all the way down. But I'll let you guys play with these settings here. But what I recommend is trying boost high and then playing with these settings like this. Maybe put these on 40, um, the effects drop to 40, and you're gonna be able to hear those footsteps a lot better. So that's just something that you guys can definitely um, mess with. Now everything else is up to you, but those are the main settings that I would recommend changing, and those are my personal, my best settings when I'm playing Call of Duty Warzone. Let me know what you guys think, what changes you guys make, what sensitivity settings you guys like using. Was there an option that I didn't change that you guys think would be beneficial for you guys? Let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think about season four, which just started. I'm excited to dive into it. I've been working, so I haven't had a chance. So that is going to be the next thing I do do is get a couple games in of the new season, start working on my battle pass. Cause I just got my battle pass, but you can see I'm only level one. But hey, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up. And as always, guys, I appreciate all the support. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. But until the next one, nothing but skills is out.